now, Eyewitness News This Morning. You are looking live at Constitution Plaza, where we are the site of the 15th annual Taste of Hartford. We're just hours away from all the food, music, and fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I'm Curtis Jackson. And I'm Polly Bell. And welcome to Eyewitness News This Morning. Today and tomorrow, we'll be broadcasting live from Constitution Plaza for the Taste of Hartford. That's right. We've got Mr. Food out here, our Nancy Aborn, and of course, again, a lot of good food. How many? 50 Everything. restaurants? Well, 25 restaurants, 25 but 50, 50 different, different selections. I mean, Polish, Italian, Greek, you name it. We've got it. And we're going to get a little bit of all of it while we're here. But first, it is a little bit nippy out here this morning. You are going to need one of these Ooh. as you head out the door. Let's go ahead and check and see how things are doing with our Joe Fury. Good morning to you, Joe. Hey, Curtis Folly, good morning. Yeah, we're sampling the seasons right now. Uh, we've had some uh, really crazy weather over the last week, and that's because the cold air from the north has come down to meet the, uh, the warm air that's supposed to be here this time of year. And so a lot of violent weather across the United States. And for right now, well, this morning, we're on the cold side of things. You really do have to dress accordingly this morning. It's very much a day today out of the month of April and not early June. That was the case yesterday. As far as your forecast first goes today, well, we're going to look at uh, bright sun this morning. Temperatures are in the 40s, even some 30s on the thermometer out there this morning. If it uh, doesn't read in the 30s on your thermometer, it feels that way because there's a breeze out here going for just the 60s this afternoon with sunshine and some clouds mixed and, and a breeze as well. And as far as the shoreline goes, maybe we can do 70 there today, but temperatures are even into the 40s in some spots along the shoreline this morning, and it will be a bit on the windy side today as well. Probably not quite as windy as it was yesterday. 48 in Hartford this morning across the area. Temperatures uh, range from near 40. Look at that, 40 at Torrington to 50 at Groton, New London. It looks like this kind of weather is going to stick with us right into the weekend. I'll be back with all the details on your weekend forecast in just a few minutes. Curtis okay. Thanks a lot there, Joe. Our top story this morning. It was supposed to be closed a long time ago. But a long landfill near Yukon is still open, and it is starting to affect the drinking water there. Now residents say they have had enough. Dennis House reports. Environmental activists say somewhere in this landfill on the Yukon campus, dangerous chemicals over time contaminated the drinking water of nearby neighbors. It was, looked like it had a oily skim on it, for one thing. And another thing is it smelled like rotten onions. So John Yuschok sued Yukon, claiming chemicals from the landfill polluted his well water. One of the university attorneys asked me if uh, I was suing for money. I said, no, I'm not suing for money. I'm just suing for fresh water. And he says, God damn it, you're going to put water in whether you like it or not. That was 1980. Two years later, the Department of Environmental Protection ordered the landfill be closed. And in 1985, Mr. Yuschuk's lawsuit was finally settled. He thought he'd won. But in 1989, this landfill was still open. In fact, some people were still illegally dumping here. Larry Wassily used to play at the landfill. And the things that we used to watch them dumping out of cans from our little mini bikes and getting chased out of here, um, it was pretty toxic stuff. Now the community is trying to get Yukon to clean the place up, but they are also putting pressure on the DEP, saying the commissioner hasn't put enough pressure on Yukon. I live in that town. I live in Mansfield. And to suggest that I would allow something to go on that was, that was dangerous to the residents of my own town is highly insulting to me. Rock says people should not worry about health threats from the landfill. Others disagree. Notice a trend in terms of the uh, high number of cases of cancer, of uh, people who lived in this uh, general area. As for John Yuschok, Yukon eventually hooked up a fresh water supply to his house. I got everything I asked for. That's all he wanted was fresh water. Now, John Yuschok has cancer, but he stopped short of blaming it on Yukon and the landfill. Now, Yukon is supposed to reveal plans this month for shutting down the landfill by the fall. Some want the DEP to investigate. I'm Dennis House, Channel 3 Eyewitness News this morning. As we head into summer, another key source of power is shut down. This after a worker makes a critical mistake, accidentally reversing a discharge hose and filling the generator with seawater. United Illuminating says its Bridgeport Harbor generating plant may not be back online until the end of July. It would have supplied power to as many as 100,000 homes this summer. There's been a second arrest in the home invasion and murder of a 59-year-old Hartford man. Hubert Mar Martin was killed when three men burst into his home on Blue Hills Avenue in January. Yesterday, police arrested 26-year-old DeMont Murphy, charging him with taking part 
in the robbery. A 19-year-old suspect was arrested last week. A third man, Kyrie Miller, is still at large. Another student has been arrested for making a serious threat, this time on a school bus in eastern Connecticut. Authorities say a 17-year-old from the Woodstock Academy said, quote, I feel I'm going to kill people soon. I want to see people suffer. There are new guidelines for sex education in state schools, and they are raising concerns about what kids should know and when they should know it. The plan would teach students in grades four and five to recognize changes that occur in puberty. Students in grades five through eight will learn the skills to prevent pregnancy and HIV, and high school students would be taught different forms of contraception and how they prevent pregnancy and HIV. The State Board of Education says these are only guidelines. Implementing the specifics will be left to local school boards. The board also says the benefits of abstinence is one of the items in the plan. It may not be lunchtime yet, but we are ready, already ready for getting <laughs> this taste of the taste of Hartford this morning. I've been waiting for this forever. Too. That's right, Mr. Food, he's coming up with some treats this morning with some of the vendors at the Taste of Hartford this year. He's joined by our own Nancy A. Warren. Good morning to you both, guys. Well, good morning. We actually, we have three of us here. We're also joined by Jim Tinker from Tinker's Seafood Restaurant of West Hartford. And for four days, we've got gastronomical delight here on Constitution Plaza for a taste of Hartford. We do have our own Mr. Food. And uh, Jim, you're looking well, good. You're feeling good. You what are you much. cooking for us today? Um, we're cooking main crab cakes this morning. Main crab uh, cakes. Well, uh, what, what, makes the, what makes the main crab cakes? Well, obviously the main crab meat. Um, uh, mm. So it's from Maine, the crab meat. Yes. All right. But we could, if we want to, we could use canned crab out of the, out sure. of the markets. And what I noticed before, Jim, is this really fits simple and down home the taste that everybody likes today because there's nothing here that's really elaborate this is it's just the way and the touch evidently the love that you give it because it's made with rich crackers crumbled rich crackers and red chopped red pepper chopped scallion eggs and the crab meat and you also for seasoning what have we got over here um we have a little crushed red pepper yeah and mustard and that's it? Yes. And then you sprinkle the top with a little paprika I understand that's for it. color. These and are just one of the many delights that we'll have uh, for the Taste of Hartford. I want to give you the mm. hours that you can come and visit both uh, Jim's operation as well as Mr. Food. We have uh, today from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Saturday, 11 to 11 and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Are we going to get mixing? No, well, we're not, we're not going to mix it now because we're, when we come back, what we're going to be doing is we're going to have Jim make it in the meantime. Okay. He's going to mix it together. And this is so easy that in minutes it goes into a little uh, electric skillet. And in minutes they're done. We're going to show you those. We're going to try them. And we're going to tell you how you can get the actual crab cake. Oh, because my stomach's there's... growling already. Well, it's mm. easy because Great. this weekend you're going to have it so easy, you're not even going to have to cook. You're going to be coming here and having these crab cakes. All right, more coming up from our cooking station here from A Taste of Hartford, back to you guys. Okay, sounds wonderful. It sure does. Crab cakes, and the great thing is, folks, we're not too far from that food this morning. That's right, and we want you to head on out this way with us exactly. as well. Join exactly. us. Eight minutes after the hour on Connecticut's news station, a rabies scare in North Central Connecticut after a red fox bites three people, including a child. And still ahead in this half hour, he claimed to be an astronaut, a CIA agent, and a Congressional Medal of Honor winner. He's not any of those things, but now he is under arrest. And new at 6.15, it took overtime to decide the winner in game one of the NBA Finals. We've got highlights coming up right back when we are from the Constitution Plaza and the Taste of Hartford. Channel 3 Eyewitness News. This is Connecticut's news station. Now, your forecast first with Joe Fury. Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Eyewitness News this morning. We are live from Constitution Plaza this morning. The Taste of Hartford starting today. And, well, certainly this morning, uh, it does not feel like the month of June out here. It is rather chilly. Never thought I'd need a pair of gloves in early June. But this morning, we're in the 40s and 30s across the area. There is a breeze out here. Wind chills are in the 30s everywhere. Uh, so you do have to dress accordingly. Uh, think April and not June as you move on out the door this morning. We'll go through your forecast first for the inland today and find temperatures just in the 60s today. Uh, certainly uh, a weather that is uh, not anywhere near summertime at this point in time. 
Uh, we'll go for uh, mid and maybe upper 60s this afternoon. You folks in the hill towns north and west uh, will stay in the lower 60s this afternoon. And for the shoreline, if we could do 70, that would be a big bonus. Uh, 65 to 70 at the shore today. Bright sun this morning, but a mix of clouds and sun this afternoon. And again, it will be on the windy side. This morning, there is a bit of a breeze out here. It's very hard in the month of June to get the 40s, uh, let alone have a breeze at the same time. So wind chills at times here are in the 30s. 48 in Hartford, dew point 38 right now. The wind is uh, well, showing uh, a variable uh, situation west there at about 5 and pressure at the 2970 inches. 40 at Torrington. 50 at Groton this morning, the 40s uh, across the board this morning, but again, there are a few places that are in the 30s. Uh, we have found uh, Waterbury Oxford Airport, for instance, at 39 this morning. Danbury's 43, Wyndham 44, Bradley's 46. Record for this morning is 42 degrees, but again, it feels uh, closer to 36 at Bradley with the breeze this morning. And you can see that all the clouds are off to our south now as this dry northwest flow has taken over. Uh, so that's the way it's going to be as we go on into the weekend as most of the moisture stays off to our south. Forecast today, bright sun this morning, a mix of clouds and sun this afternoon, windy and cool, high just in the 60s today, 40s tonight with a few 30s in the colder spots. And uh, then as we uh, move our way along uh, for tomorrow, uh, a mix of clouds and sunshine, high temperatures tomorrow again just in the 60s. And, oh, that's the kind of weather we're going to keep for the upcoming weekend. We keep it dry. That's good news for the taste of Hartford. And I guess we'll have to say we keep it comfortable as well. Bobby? All right. Thank you so much, Joe. Time now is 613. Topping this morning's headlines. Some people are asking the DEP to investigate a landfill in their neighborhood that was supposed to be closed a long time ago. The landfill near Yukon is still open after 16 years. And some who live nearby say its effect on their drinking water is putting their health in jeopardy. They are now demanding the dump be closed and cleaned up. Another student has been arrested for making a serious threat, this time on a school bus in eastern Connecticut. Authorities say a 17-year-old from the Woodstock Academy said, quote, I feel I'm going to kill people soon. I want to see people suffer. There's been a second arrest in the home invasion and murder of a 59-year-old Hartford man. Hubert Martin was killed when three men burst into his home on Blue Hills Avenue in January. Yesterday, police arrested 26-year-old DeMont Murphy, charging him with taking part in the robbery. A 19-year-old suspect was arrested last week. A third man is still at large. Coming up on 15 minutes before the or 15 minutes after the hour, Chicago Bulls coach Phil Jackson says his team let one slip away last night. The Utah Jazz beat the Bulls in overtime 88 to 85 last night in game one of the NBA finals in Salt Lake City. John Stockton was big for Utah while Chicago's Scottie Pippen missed a potential game tying shot at the buzzer. Game two is Friday in Utah. And, Polly, if you think it's cold out here, nothing like a good old-fashioned June playoff hockey game in Dallas. Game 5, Western Finals. With a win last night, the Red Wings would make it back to the Stanley Cup. But with only 1.30 left in regulation, Guy Cabernet on the amazing angle there ties it up for Dallas. They go to overtime. And this one is unreal. Jamie Lagenbrunner takes the huge rip from the be behind the blue line. And Chris Osgood gets beaten there. Just 46 seconds into overtime. What a finish for Dallas. The series now stands at 3-2 to two in favor of the Red Wings. Well, I feel like I'm out there on the rink right now. It's a little <laughs> chilly as we're live here at Constitution Plaza for the Taste of Heart for the 15th annual one, as, as a matter of fact. And before you hop in the car this morning, we want to see how the roads look. Our Mike Wallace in the Time Saver Traffic Report. Good morning to you, Mike. Good morning, Curtis. Morning, to Polly. Soon to be commuters are in great shape. No major problems on the Connecticut roadway so far to pass along. Light volume prevails. That'll give you a delay free commute. VA 8491A on Route 2. Just a little building volume here and there. Should be all you face. Down along the shoreline. No unusual complaints as well. Traffic on the build, but delay free. Brantford to Bridgeport on the pike. 91 merging nicely with 95. With time saver traffic, I'm Mike Wallace. Eyewitness News this morning. Thank you so much, Mike. It is now 616 on Connecticut's news station. Coming up, a car crashes into a wheelchair, sending a woman to the hospital with multiple injuries. And from New Haven, a baby is rescued from her burning crib. We will have the latest. Plus, the Discovery Channel runs into a problem with today's live coverage of the mirror.